Bum 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 Hello everybody. <laughs> this is Etho, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play series. Uh, today, a little bit special. This is episode number 300, which is absolutely, positively incredible. I can't believe it. <laughs> I have been doing this for a long time. Uh, I think this is one of the longest-running Minecraft series, actually. Uh, I thought about that today. Um, yeah, I've been doing this for quite a few years, and you guys have been great throughout the time. Uh, giving me lots of support, and I really appreciate it. And, of course... Even though we're 300 episodes in, the format hasn't changed a whole lot with my series, and uh, still having a lot of a lot of fun with this game. So that's great. Uh, of course, the updates help too; they help to keep things fresh. But yeah, 300 episodes. Uh, so for today, I wanted to do something a little special. And if you're looking at the episode title, it's a bit of a spoiler. We are going to be building the Ender Ender 2.0. Uh, so this is the original Ender Ender right up here. Built this. Oh, don't want to look at you, guy. Don't want to look at you or any of your friends. Built this a long time ago, over over a year, maybe a year and a half, maybe even two years. I can't remember. <laughs> Seems like a long time, though. Uh, it still works really good, actually, but uh, it wouldn't hurt to have an update on my Enderman farm design. And I was going to actually build... Uh, let's actually start walking because it's a bit of a ways. I want to show you how to get to it. Uh, I actually uh, was planning to build this Ender Ender 2.0 on the Minecraft server. Uh, it's an idea I've had for a while, but uh, the day I was actually looking into it and trying to figure out if it would work or not was the day the Enderman farm got built on there, just by coincidence. So, oh no, no, oh well. <laughs> so, uh, I decided instead I'm going to build in my single player world for my 300th episode, and uh, I've designed it already in uh, creative. This is actually a big, big, very ambitious project. I wanted uh, my 300th episode to, to build something, and I wanted it to be sort of memorable, something I would use. I uh, wanted it to be ambitious, and hopefully something other people will find useful as well. Oops. So, I thought an Enderman farm would be good for that, too. Um, so, we'll head on over to the build site. I haven't built it yet or anything. We're going to do that today. And try to get it all done, and then we can uh, play around with it, test it out, that kind of thing. And later, I might even make a tutorial on it if, I don't, if people want something a little more concise than this episode, because uh, it's going to be hard to, <laughs> to talk and, and record this all very very quickly um but yeah this is our road off from the the island oh i forgot to put water down that's fine still can get back um i built this uh stained glass road to get to it with this uh arrow pattern is he chasing me no sometimes i teleport on here uh i saw an interesting statistic actually a few months ago about I was looking up what people's favorite colors, uh, st statistically, you know. Um, turns out the majority of people, there was a site that had information like people were voting uh, based on their age and gender. Um, for males, like 60% of people prefer blue, and like for females, like 40 or so prefer blue as their favorite color. So the vast majority of people like blue as their favorite color. So <laughs> I thought for this path, let's make it blue, and people will like it. Uh, statistically at least <laughs> and so I got that coming out here and actually I've been using that rule for a lot of things in Minecraft uh, lately well it's not a rule it's just statistics that I thought were interesting uh, so this this area here this is a bit further away from the islands than I needed to make it but it lines up pretty nice in this spot is 100 X and 300 Z so a nice uh, bounce number that a uh, I'll be able to work off of easily as we're building this today, and I have, like I've put, uh, I put many hours into des designing this, but also many hours into uh, gathering the materials needed to build it today. And I think I got everything we need here, good to go. So <laughs> let's get to it. Ender, the Ender Ender 2.0. Uh, first thing we're going to be building is the room 
down below where we have uh, like our enchanting table, anvil, chests, that kind of stuff. Then above that is where the endermen are actually going to land. And then above that, way up in the sky, is going to be all the spawning pads that they fall down off. Uh, we're going to do a piston pusher setup. So a couple things. If you are trying to follow what I'm doing here and you're building your own enderman farm, uh, keep in mind you want to build uh, your spawning pads and that at least 128 blocks away from the main island over there. So you want your path to come out that far. Uh, so that endermen won't be spawning on the island and instead they all spawn inside your trap that you build. And also you want to build it as low as possible. If you look at my uh, Y coordinate here, I'm at my feet are at Y1. Because um, the lower you build your farm, the better the spawning rates are going to be. Uh, Minecraft, it checks the 17 by 17 chunk area centered on your player. And every 16 blocks you build up is another... Uh, 16 blocks vertically that gets checked every time it tries to place an enderman so I think if I just build 16 blocks up here my spawn rates get cut in half because there's twice as much space vertically it needs to check so try to keep it as low as you can the way I got down here is by uh, propelling down water and then placing blocks uh, on my way down and I gotta do that again here and I'm probably gonna die so <laughs> uh, let's uh, Let's get our stuff in the chest, and I'll show you how this works. I'm going to keep a few ender pearls on me, just in case I can save myself. Get this stuff off. I have uh, a bit of a trouble here. I was trying to build the foundation for our enderman farm here. We're going to build it out of quartz, because uh, quartz is pretty nice. I like it. Stands out really, really well in the end as well. Um, I wanted to have these... Uh, these quartz pillars like down here though <laughs> turns out you can't really do that this is just a regular piston I can't uh, can't push the quartz block down anyway and if I try to place it on the side of this block here it's gonna be facing uh, the wrong way so this is an interesting challenge um, here I'll, I'll just show you this too like the piston is working it just won't push it down that last block there uh, for some reason that is in the game so we got a water propel and I'll, I guess I gotta get some quartz blocks this is my first real challenge do, do, do. I'll just grab three <laughs> I'll try to do one and if I can do it I'll do them all this way um, another idea I have is maybe use a sticky piston and send it a one tick pulse and maybe it'll, it'll let me push that and leave the block behind yeah, yeah, you can see we're right at the the bottom here. This is very dangerous. Oh, that would have been... Okay, actually, I can't jump in this. I have to walk off. Okay. If I jumped, I would have fell through, and then I got to place it like that. <laughs> and that is how you do it. And I got to do that for each of these fun stuff. So I will be right back. This is really getting my adrenaline pumped up doing this <laughs> over and over. Constantly facing near-death experiences. Okay, come on, come on. So far I've done them all without dying though, which is great. And that is the last one. Um, so, let's re-gear up here. My main concern today is I'm going to fall into the void with all my uh, quartz or redstone or pistons or something. <laughs> and... Uh, won't be able to finish today or something like that, but I'm going to be very careful. Um, even if I fall off with nothing, though, it's a long walk back here, which is kind of painful. So, the next thing we're going to do is get our style on. Let's get some more of these. Let's get the quartz out, I guess. And we're going to have a blue theme for reasons I've explained already. Uh, let's do... let's just do a stack. Loving the new bl blue stained glass. I'm still in the older snapshot though, so the borders are more defined and the glass isn't as transparent. Um, hopefully it'll look good in the next snapshot too. I haven't updated yet because Minecraft hasn't updated and it's just a pain to switch between the two. What else do we need? I need more quartz. Where is it? There it is. Chiseled. And we will do more pillars. Right? No, we want stairs. That's what we want. Stairs. Okay. 
And as I do this, maybe I will talk about the history of Enderman Farms a little bit and what uh, we plan to do different today. So back when I made my original Ender Ender, um, I remember looking on YouTube for examples of how be people were building Enderman Farms at that time. And the majority of people were like flooding their entire <laughs> end island or or lighting it all up with torches and then building these funnel traps similar to my blaze farm. Um, and that was that was the norm at the time. So I had the idea back then to build far away from the island to... I got it, yes. To uh, easily get max spawn rates and then also the piston pusher method to get them down to one health, um, which turned out really well. And I wasn't even trying to make an XP farm at that time. It just so happened that it was one of the most amazing, actually it is the most amazing way of making an XP farm is an Enderman farm, which is what people mainly make them for. I just wanted the Ender Pearls though. Um, and then since then, uh, primarily the Zip Crowd crew, I think uh, Panda mainly, has come up with some improvements. Uh, most notable is the vine trick, which allows you to reset the fall damage of the mobs, and then they, uh, then you can stack spawning pads on top of each other vertically. So that was a huge improvement, and then uh, also uh, tripwires and that came out in the game, and other efficiencies were figured out. And with mine, <laughs> honestly, there's not much left to improve. It's been pretty much perfected at this point, but there is one one trick we're going to be focusing on today uh, with this um, that you can do with TNT which is going to make it convenient like my blaze farm like with my blaze farm I pretty much just have to push a button and I can get tons of XP just by sitting there but it takes time the enderman farm you get tons of XP quickly but you have to constantly spam the click button which is annoying but I think in 1.5, possibly, I know for sure in 1.6, a change was made in the game where uh, when you ignite TNT with a flint and steel or with a flame bow, it now keeps track of the player so that this is not very well known at this point, I don't think. But uh, when the TNT kills a mob, they drop experience points and Endermen do not teleport away from that. So that is the main trick we're using to make this an amazing enderman farm uh, today and hopefully it all turns out well we're gonna first make our little room down here though so this is going to be enchanting table right here so I guess let's put a piece of glowstone there do 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 glowstone all right um, and this is <laughs> this is huge project. Like it's gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot off camera here. I just want to do. This is probably the most varied thing I'm doing uh, right now. By varied, I mean non-repetitive. Okay, we'll do that. And I have my pillars still. So let's do a simple little pattern like this. But you can make your your room down below however you want it to look. Uh, you don't have to copy what I'm doing. And then, okay, we take this out. I'm building this from memory because I've already designed it in creative, like I said. And we will put chiseled, I'm pretty sure, goes there. Like that. And then we're going to have pillars that go up uh, to the next layer with ladders on over here. Okay, and... Let's see, let's change this up. We'll put a stair there and one over here. Do, do, do. Like so. Okay, and then our books are going to go around here. Let's go get our books in our enchanting table. Uh, I tried to bring everything I could, so we're going to have to keep running back and forth. Also, our anvil. Split that just in case I die. <laughs> Uh, I think I need 16, actually. And I've been saying actually a lot today, and it has me worried that I've picked up a new filler word, which is something I, I notice when I watch myself back. Uh, 
it's I I have these bad words I use as filler sometimes or that I keep using repetitively repeatedly and today seems to be actually and I hope it doesn't catch on in my vocabulary okay put another chisel there trying not to lose my precious quartz because this stuff is a pain to get uh, I didn't lose too much okay so chiseled there and there I believe and then pillars do 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 like so okay that's good and let's fill it up with our bookshelves and with my other design I actually <laughs> I did it again darn it I uh, I put this here just because it looked better which means I probably don't have enough bookshelves probably is another word I use a ton I just can't help myself okay let's go back get two more two more there they are Okay, and this is this is the main place we're going to be standing as we use this farm. Okay, and I'm going to put ender chest here and anvil on top and then ladders to go up here to the next level. And let's see here. <laughs> this is tough to remember, I believe. We want to have quartz blocks around uh, the glowstone on the next level. It's very important with this design or this trick we're going to be doing that it's only two blocks high the ceiling here. It just works better and also the room dimensions are really important. Uh, so this, the actual building I'm doing here is a 13 by 13 square. Uh, from here to here though is only 11 by 11 so that's important to keep in mind because uh, I'm going to be putting TNT in the very center and when it explodes uh, the farthest it can reach the enderman is up to here if you go one block further the TNT won't hit them so that is very important and then uh, maybe I'll do a few more things off camera here just to speed this along Aha, very good, very good. So I have the bottom room just about all done here. We just need some finishing touches, which we can do on camera real quick here. Uh, but this is the grand reveal. Da -da -da -da. Ta -da. <laughs> so that is our like enchanting room and storage for the Enderman farm uh, at this level here. And then at the top level there is where the Endermen actually land. And we have to build uh, one other key component up there. Well, let's go take a look inside. Uh, there is some levers there, which I don't really care for, but <laughs> it's the only way I could power uh, the lamps, which are lighting pretty much the whole place, these things here in the corners. Um, so finishing touches. Uh, we have the, the lower level here. We are going to put cyan carpet. I love my cyan wool uh, right there to cover up the glowstone. We are going to get some chests down for storage. Cannot use item frames down here. If you use item frames, unfortunately, the TNT blows them up, no matter <laughs> where you have them, pretty much, because the blast reaches everywhere. So for labeling the chests, you have to use good old-fashioned signs or something. But uh, we'll put trap chest in the middle. I don't know what I'm putting in these yet, but we'll need most likely food and, well, don't really need food if I'm not hitting them, <laughs> I guess. Uh, that is the ma major advantage of this farm. And this is a total etho thing here. I like to put stuff underneath chests. Uh, usually, I'm not a big fan of how crafting tables look generally, especially when you have like a pure white build. A crafting table looks really out of place, so I like to hide it underneath chests if I can. Although... Putting the anvil on top doesn't make sense either. I would have liked to have the anvil on the bottom and the chest on top, but I've I've added in quartz pillars here for the top layer. Let's go take a look up there. Uh, so I wouldn't have been able to open the chest. So we got the middle, and I like how the top layer looks, uh, especially these these areas here are where the endermen are going to be falling. So the spawning pads go right above. Um, you'll notice. 
it's a split spawning system. <laughs> uh, that was one of the key features I thought would be great for Minecraft in case uh, more than one person wanted to use the Enderman farm. You could have one person on this side, one person on this side, and uh, should be able to keep up pretty well. But in single player, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, now, let's see, what else do we got to do here? Uh, let's take a... Well, I guess we're going to be going up in a second anyway. So this middle part, this is really important. Is there anything else I forgot to do? Uh, we are going to put a ladder right here. This is going to hold water up, and it also leaves an opening for XP orbs to fall down on us. Uh, you could probably use a trap door too, but uh, iron bars do not work. I'm guessing glass panes don't work. And yeah, so pretty much limited to trap door or... Uh, ladder here. You don't want to use a sign because we're going to have TNT above here and a TNT uh, can fall through if there's a sign there but the ladder makes the space um, just a little bit bigger than what TNT can fit through and get this going. Pressure plates to hold the water in place. Did I bring the water? I did. That's going to go on top here. We're building the blast chamber right now. Um, I think uh, let's do it like this. On the back side, we will have a ladder. This is what we're going to use to refill the TNT uh, as we use it. Not exactly sure how how high up I want this to go. I'll probably figure that out off camera. Let's just go up a ways though. Woohoo! Oh, I missed. <laughs> Darn it! Uh, so we'll have a way of getting up to the top from the back here. I should put a torch on top too just for now. Um, I'll put glass at the very top when this is all done and I figure out what height I want. But uh, let's see. <laughs> let's go down here and just look at this pattern I did with the glass. I want to copy it. So it goes white, blue, light blue, white, blue, light blue. Okay. So let's do downward facing arrows. And we'll start with white, I suppose. And I guess blue. And the white will go up like that. That. And then next will be cyan. Or light light blue, I guess. I didn't use cyan with this. Oh, this is going to be tedious to build. Oh my goodness. Uh, the main... I got to really hustle today because the main time-consuming part of all of this is going to be building the spawning pads. Um, that is by far the biggest volume of blocks I got to place. Okay, so next would be blue, white. And what we're doing is we're making a tube that we're going to fill up with TNT all the way up to the top there. And this is going to be like our TNT uh, reserve. And I'm going to stand down below there and shoot up with a flame bow. And that will will mark the TNT as mine, so when it kills the Enderman, oops, it's going to register as my kill and I will get XP orbs from it. Um, you could also just have place for one TNT in a tube or something if you just want to use a flint and steel. But yeah, you get the idea. So the other thing we got to do, these are 11 blocks wide. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it, it is a square, uh, but it's 11, 11 long, and uh, there'll be pistons like over here at the spawning pads, and also over here that push them together in the middle. Oh, I got the burps, excuse me. Uh, so... That's going to be 22 spawning spaces for each of these, so 44 total. So each layer of uh, pistons I put is going to be 44 spawning spaces, and in total, I'm going to make at least 16 layers, I think. Seems to give good rates, but maybe more, maybe less. <laughs> Might not be able to do it all today. Um, oh yeah, and we're going to start on the rings here. So from somewhere above here, like within two blocks, we want, oh, oh, <laughs> uh, 
Every delay I, just makes me want to face bomb because this episode is going to get really long. There's so much to do with this build. It's crazy. And I forgot to bring stone slabs with me. So let's go back quickly, quickly. Uh, just show you how to do these rings real quick. Do, do, do. Okay, so two blocks up is where I'm going to start mine. And that's going to follow the outline of this. Do I have a speed potion? No. All right. And you might have noticed my XP is down at 2. Uh, I did die, but it was on purpose. I just wanted a quick teleport back to uh, my base. So I put all my stuff in the chest and jumped off so I could get home really quick. Okay, so that is the pattern. We're going to follow with this. This is going to take a while. i got to get some speed potions so I can do this quicker. Okay. And then the next ring on the other side is going to be five blocks spacing apart. So three, four, five. And then on the sixth one is where the next one starts. Although you can just look down below. <laughs> and I'm going to have these rings. I'm using the stone. I would like to use the quartz. Uh, actually, but oh, I did it again. Darn it! Um, <laughs> uh, quartz is just way too expensive, so I'm just going to use stone. Uh, and I'm going to go up to about Y49. So I will be back in a bit when I do that, and we will continue on on the spawning pads or something. Oh man! Okay, so jump forward a few hours, and I've gotten a lot done here. Uh, I decided to do one half pretty much all off camera. I'm just going to show you how I do the spawning pads and that real quick. It is 4 a.m. right now for me and I want to go to bed so we are not finishing this today uh, but we should be able to test it at least. It just won't be as quick as if I was to get all the spawning pads done so if the endermen seem like they're spawning slow don't worry once I get it all finished it will be just fantastic. But yeah, they fall down and they all gather into these side things. When the other side's done, they will gather here. And I can still use it like a regular Enderman farm. Not a problem. And like I said, you can get two people going in here if, if we had them falling on the other side. So that's good. Let's head on up to start on the other side. So those rings that we just installed are to keep them from... Uh, flying out of where I want them to drop because uh, if they bump each other in midair they, they'll they knock each other all over the place um, so above the rings and we're going all the way down alright go back up okay so above the rings I have stopped these at uh, Y44 43.5 is the top one and of course that all depends on how you do the room below but you need the enderman to fall I believe uh, 43 blocks to get them down to a one hit kill so uh, to reset the fall damage we are setting up I'm using this as my guide trying to anyway I think I went up that much so Y46 uh, then we do a ring out of just regular bricks, and this is going to be our vines over here. Do, do, do. So let's go quickly, quickly. Ah, man. I am beat. <laughs> this is a huge project. Oh, I really wish I had a helper that could do the other side while I did this. Because, wow. It's just so many blocks. I didn't even go up quite as high as I want it to be. I think it only goes about about up to Y100. I want it to go to, I think, y 128s where I'll stop and just see how that works. Um, but we're going to build a... Well, actually... Oh, I didn't grab... I was going to use uh, wood buttons, but I guess it doesn't really matter, does it? So we will make a bunch of buttons, and we're going to use these at the bottom of here. And this prevents... You hear the pistons going? This prevents the vines from growing down lower than this point. So we'll do that on both sides. And let's go back up higher. Doo -doo -doo. 
This is going to be really cool when it's all done, I tell you. Really, really cool. Have tools for days. Okay, so I just skipped ahead a little bit here. Oh, what's he doing? <laughs> I I might need to adjust the vines a little bit. They, they, they work, but sometimes... The Endermen do strange things. I'm not sure if they should really be doing some of the strange things they're doing. But anyway, this is our vine wall. And, of course, all places. You see, if I don't put the block here, this is going to be three blocks tall, and they can spawn on that. So we want to make sure there's absolutely no place outside of the trap where Endermen can spawn or, or teleport to, uh, if possible. Okay, so... I don't think I have enough vines to totally fill this all, so we'll just put it at the top and they'll grow down uh, to the buttons. Like so, do it on both sides. But yeah, we want them to go down to about that point there. Um, if you don't have enough vines, I find the Endermen will just fall right through them and bypass the block and it won't reset their fall damage. Alright, hopefully that all grows. I think it will. Uh, now, we are going to begin on the spawning pads. And this ladder here is just temporary. Uh, just as a way of getting up and down. So I've done quite a few of these already. And I have a pretty good pattern going. Um, I think. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if I can remember it. Uh, go up. Oop. Like so. Pistons are here. Now those are really loud. And we'll do a wall all along. So this is 11 pistons per side. And there's four sides per layer. All in all, I think it's about 700 to 800 pistons total. Uh, if we do 16 layers, which is quite a bit, actually. Do, 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 do. Okay, and next thing we will do, we're going to put some blocks here, some half slabs, just as filler, so again, Endermen can't go where we don't want them to. Get four blocks going there. Do the same on this side. Alright, and let's go up ourselves. Now, what I've been doing is I've just covered those up with blocks, hop on. Uh, place one out there and there. Break those. And this is just a thing for the tripwire hooks. So you put one over there, one over there. And then usually I <laughs> I run across as I place the blocks over the pistons. Go over to the other side, do the same thing. I haven't fallen yet. I am surprised. I'm usually a lot more... Uh, careless than I have been do that I have oh I am tired than I have been today because I have not I I do not want to lose my stuff while I'm building this absolutely not all right and then we're gonna go four blocks over top like so this is the next spawning uh, pad this ring we're doing right now So there's quite a bit to each of these layers. This is a big build. Alright. But I think that's about as simple. Oops, I'm not even doing this right. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to look at this video tomorrow and I'm going to be like, what am I talking about? What am I saying? Delirious. Alright, so then uh, we got to send power. Oop. That's normal, by the way, that, that spamming thing. That's just a, an addition I added, uh, which I, we will look at in just a second here. Oh, yeah, and of course, make make sure there's no spawning spaces. So we got to cover everything with half slabs if it's a full block, uh, pretty much. Okay, wire on the other side. Like so. And so one of these sides I've been making special, not this one, the one away from our walkway. 
uh, yeah, you see this this extra gizmo stuff over here, this extra redstone. Uh, what I've been doing, uh, place on the half slab there, go down. This is optional. You don't need to do this if you don't want to. Uh, but basically, I've been adding in one of these to each of them with a comparator. Turn it to subtraction and repeater set at one. And what this does is sometimes with pistons, when they push an enderman or any mob, period, uh, the mob will get glitched inside the piston head and it won't retract because the piston is extended and the enderman will get stuck in the string that we're going to put over there. Uh, so what this does is it makes a clock so that if they're in that string it just keeps uh, spamming the piston until it actually pushes them out. And from my tests that does seem to work uh, pretty good. Occasionally it sometimes takes two or three tries. But otherwise if they get stuck in the piston heads uh, the Endermen need to despawn on their own, and that can take uh, 30 seconds or so where that spawning pad is not being uh, used to its full potential. So I think this is a good addition if you're willing to do that ex this extra little step here. Uh, otherwise, you can just connect directly like that. All right, and you only need to do this on one of the sides, not on both. And go around like so. And yeah. Okay, <laughs> so that's the gist of of the layers, and I'm doing 16 of those on each side. So it does take quite a while. I'm just gonna cap this one off right now with the torch. I'll come back to it later, but we are not gonna be uh, getting that far today. Of course. Uh, also got to do the string, which I forgot to do. Like so, okay, it's connected. Now, when I jump, <laughs> actually, if I jump here, what kind of chances do I have of surviving? Yeah, it's pushing me. Um, that little extra gizmo thing I did also makes these uh, retract quicker after they push an enderman instead of it taking a full uh, second or whatever is normally it's a little bit quicker and yeah so that's about it so we are gonna head down there and actually test this test this thing out with uh, what we got set up today which is a lot actually <laughs> uh, probably only need another two or three hours to finish this up at most I would think All right, everyone. So we are going to try this thing out today. After all, uh, it's not finished. It will be about twice as quick when it's all finished. The spawning rates and all that. But we can we can see it in action. No, not a problem. Um, ooh, those guys are teleporting around. And also, I'll have to do something about the path. I'll I'll cover it with water. Uh, probably make it too high or something and put water above. So 32 blocks away from my main building there and might need to also uh, shield a few other places because you can see endermen are walking around where I don't want them to be so the way we are going to do the TNT thing uh, I brought a flame bow and some arrows and hopefully I don't die with these I'm gonna put them away actually <laughs> um, so the way to stock this thing up by the way and I'm gonna use a trap door for it Place one, one TNT there to begin with. It's very important you build this the way I told you to. Otherwise, your whole thing is going to explode on you and you're going to be very sad. Um, from my testing... Wait, am I supposed to... Ah, this isn't supposed to be there. How does that work then? I think that's fine. Yeah, I think that's fine. Woohoo! This is how I plan on filling it. It's not a big deal. I can even ender pearl down to it. But in all my tests, I think I tried this about a hundred times. I didn't have the TNT blow up anything on me. So I'm hope hopefully got everything set up right. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna be very sad. Oh, and he took one. See that's the thing. 
That's why you don't want them outside of those barriers, because they steal your TNT if they can get to that middle. Uh, but this is the way it works. You take your flame bow, which I put over here. And when... Well, we don't need the TNT anymore. Press F3 when it gets to about 80 uh, entities. And all the XP and ender pearls are picked up. That means you're ready for another harvest. So you take your, your flame bow, you shoot up. TNT falls down. Get out of the way. Booyah! <laughs> Everybody's dead. And you stand in the middle here and enjoy. Ha <laughs> ha And while you're collecting your XP... Oh! See, that thing's been ch changing on its own. It's really weird. The XP orbs seem to update the trap door. Uh, might change that back to the ladder. I, I like the idea of being able to control it, but if it's doing its own thing, that's a little weird. Yeah. Sounds like there's a few guys mad at me too because uh, there was probably some full health guys around that weren't supposed to be. Like this guy here. Oh no, he was one hit. What is... It's the it's the XP orbs for sure. Let's break this. Don't wreck my carpet. Okay, let's let's go again here. I think we're about ready. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so, you can just keep doing it over and over. Very little effort. Um, two TNT explosions, I think, will get you up to level 30. And... It's got the convenience of my blaze farm with the speed of my old ender ender all combined into one. Oh, and I was just a little bit short. And if you need the ender pearls, you can still go up and collect them if you want. Not a problem. And the size of this thing was important because uh, that's about the limit to how far the XP orbs will track you um, if you're standing in the middle. So all in all, it's pretty cool. Yeah, we could do one more. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I love doing that. So that is the Ender Ender 2.0. I'm going to finish this up, guys, and then we will see it again next episode, probably, in its full glory. Uh, and when I'm well-rested and able to speak in a more excited way because I'm really happy this is done <laughs> um, but yeah that is that is the ender ender for today so let's go read the comments and we will call this an episode okay everybody so what do we got here what do we got here comment number one for episode 300 says on episode 300 put your world up for download please Ah, so many people have been requesting my world up for download. It's been a long time since I last updated that. Uh, I am going to finish the Ender Ender 2.0, and then I am going to put the download link up for my world. So episode 301 is when I will most likely get my world up for download again, and you guys will be able to check out all the new stuff I've done around the world. And I will try to remember you next try to remind you next episode too <laughs> uh, but yeah check the video description next episode for the download link second comments this is a question I get asked pretty frequently actually so Etho after all the time I've been wondering all this time how did you come up with the name Etho I must say it's one of the most unique names and I love it also, I want to send congrats for making an LP that is still interesting and stays fun after 300 episodes. I think you're the only one who succeeded in that. Congrats, man. And also, greets from a Belgian fan. Thank you very much for your comments. It's very nice of you. Uh, the name Etho. <laughs> hmm. I've had four online, different online names. Um, I've had Etho for about 10 years give or take. Uh, maybe even longer, actually. But my first online name was da -da -da -da, Goober. <laughs> uh, 
like uh, Kurt's, like you know, like Kurt Scuber. <laughs> That's what my original online name was for about a year. Then I switched over to Master of Disguise. Uh, that was because I was playing this game called Worms World Party, Worms Armageddon. Some of you, most of you, probably know what that game is. And I was a little bit immature, a little bit trollish in my younger days. Definitely not today. And uh, I would do this thing where I would copy somebody's name and copy their their team. And then play against them with exact copy of their team. And they would always have like a, what? How did you do this? Type of reaction. And I thought it was funny. I did that for about two weeks or so. But I kept the name... Master of Disguise for quite a while, and then I decided to change it to Ersatz, which is E-R-S-A-T-Z, which means copy, so that was kind of a playoff of the old name, Master of Disguise, and then finally from Ersatz, I moved on to Etho. I liked, uh, I liked having a name like Ersatz, I liked the unique E to it, so I decide for my next name I would use E as the first letter and I just added a THO at the end of that and that is how I became Etho. <laughs> it has nothing to do with the Greek ethos uh, thing, that's just a coincidence. Um, yeah, great story bro. <laughs> uh, the name Ethos Lab also came from my days playing worms. I made a bunch of programs or utilities for people to use uh, for those games and I became known as sort of a technical kind of guy and somebody that I played with offered me a subdomain uh, where I could host up all the programs and, and little helper things I made for people and when he asked me what I wanted my subdomain name to be I said I don't care and he gave me the name Ethos Lab on his own so when I made my YouTube account, I did it without even thinking and just used the name Ethos Lab. Cool story, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of episode 300. I hope you enjoyed it. We will finish up that Ender Ender 2.0 and check it out next time and probably do a bunch of enchanting. And I will see you guys then. And I really appreciate, I'm not just saying, I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me since I started this. It's really, really awesome. Thanks again. Bye-bye.